of none other than Pastor Josie M. Bostick, along with Dr. Earl Bostick, Sr., DMD. I want you to know that the fastest 30 minutes is about to start, so what you need to do is call a friend and call a neighbor and let them know that living strong is on and you cannot go wrong. For the word of the Lord, it is quick and powerful and sharper than any to its sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of bone and marrow. And we know that it is a thought and a discerner of the intents of the heart. Call a friend, call a neighbor, and let them know that the fascist 30 minutes starts right now. We was talking about something very powerful earlier, and we're dealing with a new topic in a new series, talking about the blessing of forgiveness and also there is a power behind forgiveness that a lot of people do not realize and we're going to begin to look at that and delve in that a little bit on this week but for each and every one of you that are watching I want you to know that on this week also we will be showing the continuation of the clips from the Atlanta listening party PT group media ministry we want you to know, stand by for that. We are excited about what you are doing and the fact that you are logging on and that you're ready to see a continuation of this. There's a whole lot that is happening in America and across the land right now. And the United States of America is experiencing another level of God's grace like never before. But I want you to know that there is an intended blessing that is waiting upon you. The Bible declares, and we talked about it earlier in some of the other live stream services, that the Lord allowed even Abraham to see that the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow to it. So I want you and each and every one of you that are watching, remember that we are listener supported, we are viewer supported. So make sure that you log on, send your donation, P.O. Box 363, Ridgeland, South Carolina. Here, in the word of the Lord, we're going to look again in the book of Ecclesiastes, where we left off, we're picking up again on tonight, this afternoon, and I want to talk about something that's very, very powerful, and it's what God is releasing in the lives of the people in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8 is where we're going. And we're going to look at this once again on tonight. The Bible declares in verse number 9, Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. So he's looking at something that he's applied his heart to based upon every work that is done under the sun. Well, Prophet Johnson what is this going to have to do with forgiveness? We're just running a little ground basis to set some things up here because we saw earlier that even with the man who was poor by his wisdom who saved the whole city, we understood that his wisdom was good, but because he was a poor wise man, he was not remembered. Also, in verse Number nine, in chapter number eight, in the book of Ecclesiastes, we continue. But I want to look at verse number nine again here in, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter number eight. It says that I saw this and, and that the work is done under the sun. But look at what he's saying. There is a time we're in. <coughs> One man rule it over another. Why? To his own hurt. So now... If this happens in life, what level of opportunity would it take for God to move in your life and in my life based upon forgiveness? That means that we have to reach down inside to find something that is far greater. But we're going to look a little bit further and we're going to go a little bit deeper because I'm getting excited about the word of the Lord here on this afternoon. In verse number 10, and so I saw the wicked. He's looking at something. Remember, the Bible says, don't worry about the wicked when you see them prosper and the evildoers in their wicked ways, for they shall soon be cut off, even as the green herb of the air, of the, of the field, rather. And so, therefore, you've got to understand that when God moves, he moves with purpose, he moves with potential, and he moves with destiny designed for your life and mine. I believe that we're at a point in time 
to where we cannot turn back now. We are seeing the grace of God that is experienced all over this nation like never before. When you look at Oklahoma, and I told you that God was allowing America to come to a place of prayer, come to a place of repentance, and a place of servitude unto him, and his grace is upon us like never this before, this year than ever before. Also, I want to remind you that I warned you against stalling in the season. Do not become lackadaisical. Do not become to a point to where you feel as though, well, nothing is moving, nothing is happening, I might as well sit still. That is not the case. I'm going to show you that there is such a blessing in being able to forgive in life until God is going to turn everything around for you, and I believe real fast. So in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number t nine, eight rather, verse number 10, it says, and so the wicked, I saw them buried, and who had come and gone from the place of the holy, so they're going to be people <clears throat> that is always going to be designed to come into your life and to try to offset what God has planned for you. But you cannot let that stop you. If you are faithful of a few things and you are willing, the Lord said that he'll make you ruler over many. And so right now, I believe that he's drawing purpose, he's drawing vision. And there's some things in your life that has been temporary long enough. I believe that when the breaking of day come, oh my God, it will be such a break that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and neither have entered into the hearts of men the things in which God have prepared for them. But I want you to know he's revealed it unto those of us who are the son and his daughters by the Holy Spirit. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes, as we continue in verse number 10, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done, oh, they did a whole lot in the city, a whole lot of evil work, but look at what it says. This also is vanity, just a waste of time. Then he declares, because the reason why all of that happened, a sentence against an evil work. Remember, there's a difference in evil and wickedness. They kind of work together a little bit because the word wicked comes from the word wicker, which means to swerve, or to veer, or to curve, which means really to veer off of course. So what happens is that when the wicked comes in, they swerve, and they curve, and they veer off course. This is where you get what is called the wicker furniture from. Okay? Does not mean that the wicker furniture is wicked. <laughs> so if you buy it, doesn't mean anything. It just means that that's where the eventual root word of the name come from. And so therefore, remember when I talked about evil just a little bit, and I don't want to talk about this guy tonight because that's not my focus, but remember he's the head leader of the four omigos, okay? So now God is saying because there's not a sentence against this thing, what he allows is that the father have a way of bringing people to their knees and he have a way of making nations repent. Even Jonah learned that lesson when he tried to run from the Lord. You can try to run from God all you want, but you really can't hide because he's right there. And I realized that Jonah, he must have been in a whole lot of trouble. But there's a whole lot of things that are based upon that word of the Lord concerning Jonah because Jonah had to go and have a whole nation to repent. There's somebody that's watching living strong, and you understand that the word of the Lord comes to you through the television broadcast, so profound, so on target, and each and every one of our viewers, good news for you, can't help it, pat yourself on the back, you're really about five years advanced ahead of other ministries. I remember a long time ago, a woman shared with me, Prophet Johnson, you are before your time. Well, having started prophesy when I was 12 years old, being able to go back and remember all the way to the time when I was inside my mother's womb and coming out even to the point of wearing diapers that would stick me with pins back in those days. Remember they had the big pins. They had some of them pink, some of them blue, and they was big enough to go from one side of the diaper to the other side of the diaper. 
if it had one of those right now today, it'd probably be worth a whole lot of money. But anyway, I remember getting stuck by those things, even as a little bit of infant, being about one, one years old. I don't think I should have been wearing it at that time, so it must have been about eight months. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's what life was all about. But here's the thing about it. I forgive all my aunties and my uncles that stuck me with those pins. And I forgive them also for giving me the hot bottle of milk when I was only about four or five months years old. And I was crying. And my uncle came up there and he overheated the bottle. And there where my brother was. And they got the bottle too hot. And they said, this boy is not going to stop crying. You better give him something. So they squirted the milk in my mouth while it was real hot. Just like a dog, I lapped it up and stopped crying. And when it was gone, started back crying until they gave me a hot bottle. That's the truth. You say, can he remember all of that? Oh, yes, just as plain as day. Uh, and so, therefore, it started when I was 12 years old, really. The gift really started flourishing when I was 12. And I got in trouble a whole lot because of the gift because my mother thought something was wrong, and she said, you cannot go around telling everybody everything. I said, I don't know why, but it happens. She said, you're the strangest child out of all of my children. <laughs> I couldn't figure that out till later. But the Bible declares in verse number 11, because sentence, this is the reason why, against an evil work is not executed speedily. So what God is saying is that I want you to carry out something real fast. I want you to carry out sentence against every single spirit and every single force that have come up into your life and my life to try to stop us from doing his will, regardless of what it takes. Any spirit that invades your privacy, your home, your family, your company, the Lord wants to stop, he wants to remove, and he's saying, I've got to execute some things speedily. So God knows how to move it for his own will in the forsake of your life and mine. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men I too much don't like this, but it's true. It's fully set in them to do evil, which means they just do it all over again. You know, you ever thought about people? I'd never forget the one, one show that I thought about the guy that had the cleft lip and uh, scar face, but it was another type of a scar face, not um, the um, uh, gangster movie scar face. It's another type of a movie, but they, they put him back together. And, you know, he was, he was just a bank robber and a thief. And they rebuilt his face and they put him back together. And they gave him a whole second chance and a new identity at life. And they sold up his lip and he got a chance to go into high places. He came all the way from the streets. And then all of a sudden, you know, he went back and started doing the same things he was doing all over again, robbing banks and going back to that low place in life. And cops was chasing him all over the place. And finally, he got into a fight and got busted up. And when he got busted up, they hit him in his lip. And his lip split right back in the same place to where his birth was, the same way that he was born. Which meant that you can change a man's identity, but you cannot change his heart. So what God is saying to tell you that forgiveness comes with not only with a change of heart, but it does not come with a change of identity. You can change your identity, but it comes with a change of heart. And if you can get a change of heart and you can get a change of identity, then you can get forgiveness. All right? So we're going to move on to Mark chapter number 11. And, and we're going to go there because there's a very powerful truth that I would like to talk to you about. And the Lord is speaking on the behalf of uh, the people, and, and he is moving in the lives of the people like never before. And what I like about this is that Jesus always know how to set it right. If you look at Mark chapter number 11, verse number 20, the Bible says, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree uh, dried up from the roots. And we're looking at verse number 20 in Mark chapter number 11. And Peter calling to remembrance, he said, wait a minute, God, in so many words, Master, behold the fig tree which you spoke to. Guess what? It is withered away. Thou cursed it. And Jesus answering said, having faith in God, for verily I say unto you, 
that whosoever will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Look at what he says. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, first of all, he gives the example about a fig tree and cursing the fig tree. And then the disciple goes and says, wow, I cannot believe what you said actually came to pass. And so since they're saying what you said actually came to pass, how is it? Jesus said, now look, if you speak it, number one, don't doubt it. Because if you can speak it and then believe it and don't doubt it, you know it's coming to pass whether you see it today or tomorrow. All you got to do is hold on to what God said because all the promises in him are yea and amen. So there are some things that God is saying, I want to show you a better clip of the picture of your life. And what I want to do is bring you into a stress-free atmosphere to where you don't die before your time worrying about something that you can't make live when it's not producing anyway. He cursed the fig tree because it wasn't producing. You got churches right now that God is saying that are going through the makeshift and just because they got the crowd don't mean they got the company. The company is not in the crowd. The company is in the fact that Jesus is in the crowd. And if Jesus is not the company in the crowd, then you missing God by trying to follow 10,000 folks when God is in the midst of 10 folks. Oh, preach it. And God is saying, I want you to feel out this year like you've never felt it out before because I'm going to heal you of a lot of pain and a lot of adversity and I'm going to take back all the joy that the enemy tried to steal from you. I'm going to take back everything he tried to strip from you and your family, the position that he tried to put other folks in. They wasn't called to be put in your position so they can't hold what God is getting ready to take you. Can I preach? this so God is saying there's a power that's about to be released but that power come and that blessing come through forgiveness Jesus said valley I say unto you if he shall not doubt in his heart why is he going to tell a man not to doubt after he just got through cursing the tree you can't curse what God doesn't bless no matter where they go, a man can be by himself and be in the desert. And I guarantee you, a well of water got to come up somewhere. If he anointed, he can be like Mother Teresa and the plane can crash. God bless you, Mother Teresa. And she was the only survivor that came out of the plane without a scratch. How can God save a 90-something year old woman and let everybody else perish in the midst of it all to whom much is given, much will love it. You can't forgive except you love and you can't love except you forgive. There's a blessing in forgiving. There's been people that's been hurt all over the land. But the only reason that a lot of us haven't gotten blessed because we haven't forgiven what happened in our past. And I told God in order to bless me, I want to forgive every devil. I want to forgive every demon. Y'all excuse me. I would get a little bit deep here because it's in the Bible. But on the, oh, I can't say it. The Lord saying, be nice, son. But the thing about it is that you've got to understand you have got to forgive all. No matter where they came from. No matter who they are. No matter what they did. Do like I do. The moment they do it, forgive them. Oh yeah, I have forgiven you already. It is over. It is, don't mean I'm going out to eat. Don't mean I'm showing up at your party. There's no need in calling. There is no rendezvous. Who, what, when, where, don't know how. Been there, done that. You stuck me before sticker. You won't stick me again. Just because I forgave you don't mean that I don't love you. When I forgave you, God equipped me with more power to understand you. And if I would not have under, for, forgiven you, then I would not have understood you. 
But because I understand you now, you're not in close. I can see you are far off and forgive you and still know that what you would do if you were close. So you got to release folks. You got to release them and let them go. Untie that so you can live a little bit longer. So you don't have nothing pulling on your heart and your heart, your mind and your heart rather. I got it right, but I'll just say it like that. And calling you to have a heart attack or a stroke before your time. Amazing. This is equated with blessing. How is he going to equate this with blessing? It's in the Bible. <clears throat> Look at what he says. In verse number 23, last part. But shall believe that those things which he saith, come on. How is it that man can stop a war, but they can't stop a hurricane? How is it that guns and bombs can settle the issue of a nation but a word can stop a tornado? Excuse me. It's right here. Why is it that we have missed the power of a word rather than to use the power of a material thing? Wouldn't it be amazing if you had to give up something to cross the river just to save your life and the thing that you possess the most is sentimental to you and God say to you, you got to take that gold chain off and give it to me before you can cross that river and you tell God no because I'd rather keep the gold chain and cross the river. The Lord said there's crocodiles in there and alligators too. So instead of you giving it to God, you try to cross the river, get ate up by the crocodiles and the alligator, you need to learn from the wildebeest. The wildebeest all gather to the front in the Serengeti. And they all wait to see which one will go first. You got people that are watching, living strong, and everybody waiting to see which one going to give first, and ain't none of them cross the river. And the moment you give it up, the Lord sends a fairy to take you to the other side yeah, yeah, yeah. and to let you know that now what you thought was more precious, you gave to me, I took to the other side and gave back to you when you got to the other side. Woo, come on, prophet. Yes. The same way I did Abraham with Isaac, that's the same way I'm getting ready to bless you. I feel this, Dr. Boston. I feel this on you tonight. I sense this up in here. I sense this up in here. The Lord is saying there's going to be a return to recovery. Oh my God. Oh, I ain't supposed to get off course. I'm not supposed to get off course. Can I just, I did, just like he did David with Ziklag, when Ziklag was smitten, God said, go after them. Because not only are you going to catch them, but you're going to recover all. And God is saying to tell, oh my God, I feel some living strong. The Lord said to tell you, I done prune y'all back. And I done laid some 1010 up in this atmosphere. And we are getting ready for a summer harvest. Because right at the time you think that God ain't going to come through with you and come through for you, God done forgave you before you can forgive yourself. God forgave you before you can even commit the act. Can I preach it? And he stepped over in that to make sure that everything was solidified. And I hear the Lord saying, this is a return year. Oh, my God. And I hear the word with dividends. So you got everybody sitting back waiting to see who's going to jump in first. And the one wildebeest that decides to jump in first, jumps in first even with all the alligators and crocodiles, whichever one they got in there, crocodiles, on both sides. But they don't want the first one because they're looking for the weak. They're looking for the feeble. They're looking for the old. They're looking for the young. 
that can't roll in the middle and be protected by the strong. While you're sitting back waiting for somebody else to give, somebody else sitting back waiting for you to give. And God is trying to get all of us to the other side through the crocodiles. But you can't get there because you're going to decide to be weak and you're going to decide to be feeble and you're going to decide to be young and you're going to decide to be old when I told you that the blessing of the Lord, hallelujah, make it rich and add no sorrow to it. So there's a blessing in forgiveness. And what he's saying to tell you that you are the one that was sent to make sure that you lead the way. But if you don't lead, how anybody else going to follow? So he's calling us to restore ourselves, to get back to the place of prayer and humility, and to walk in a place of promise. Can I preach it? The Lord's saying, don't just talk about it. Don't just preach about it. Live about it. Walk about it. Because he says somebody's watching that I've designed to put you on top. I receive it right now. Wondering can I trust this man? Wondering can I trust this God? Hallelujah. Your chest going to lift up tonight. Your heart going to breathe beat normal tonight. You going to breathe easy tonight. You going to sleep well. Yes you are. I feel something. I feel something up in here man. I feel, I see, both of y'all lift your hands right now. The Lord said to tell both of y'all, I just put angel wings on you. And he said, these are golden wings. And he said, Arby, Kevin, I put a scepter in both of your right hand. Arby, he said, I put a, a gold scepter in yours, Kevin, a silver in yours. That's why you had to dream about the silver. And the Lord said to tell you that I have put together a Jonathan and a David. And he said to let you know that I'm getting ready to return it back. And all I can hear the Lord saying is that there's a California in, in the da 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 There's a California, da 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 There's an airplane in Atlanta, sitting in Atlanta, ready to take us to California. That's what I heard. 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 You know what I like about the Lord? Don't worry about the money because he'll make it fine. God will make the money finer than wine. Oh, yes, he will. Because Jesus saved the best for last. Oh, I, I guess they couldn't get in that church today. God brought it over here. Oh, I know you wish you was here. I ain't got nobody else to minister to. You'll have to get it tomorrow night. 8 o'clock p.m. Fast as 30 minutes in broadcast. There's a blessing in forgiving. Don't you know the moment you forgive, you can get healed? God can heal any disease the moment you say, Lord, I forgive. That's where stress got to go. That's where pain got to go. You ever had the devil sit down and talk to your mind, telling you all kind of lies? And all the stuff he telling you ain't none of it true. All you got to do is just release it. If you can learn to close the gate off before he can open it and shield the atmosphere before he can come in. Each and every one of us are born with a balloon effect. Can I preach this? Each and every one of us are born with a balloon effect because we came out of a balloon. And we are born with an air effect because we came out of an air sack. And we are born inside of a ball because we came out of a ball. Even though you came out of the ball, you still got the ability to make that ball wrap around you while you are alive. I want to share something with you. This is very important. And I might get in a whole lot of trouble, but I got to do this right quick before I forget it. Have you ever looked at something called the deficit? They call it the trillion dollar deficit. 15, 16, probably about 18 trillion, that's steady running. Now, this is money that America is in debt to, right? Amen. I'm 
going somewhere. <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. Roll this. Now let me tell you something about this deficit. Each and every day you look at it on television, all you see is the numbers going up and going up and going up. They never go down. I want to tell you what this is right quick. Now I'm going to get in a whole lot of trouble, but I'm taking a risk on it because you need to know this. When you see those numbers going up and they call it the deficit, this is money that they say that the United States owe. Right? But how is it money that we owe when every time you go to the store, they charge you seven cents on the dollar? It appears as though instead of going up, it should come down. Now, wait, I'm showing you something simple now. I'm going to keep it elementary. First grade, if it's going up, then I got one question, where is the money going and who's getting it? And man can't tell you, but I had to seek God, so I won't tell y'all living strong. If it's steady going up, this is the word of El, Elohim, Yahweh, Yahweh, Ruach, HaKadish, through Yeshua, that he spoke unto me. He said, son, the deficit never goes up. He said, the money that you see and all those numbers that are adding up, he said, that's money each and every day that the devil's stealing. He said, that's stolen money. He said, money cannot go up when you add taxes to bring it down. So he said there's something about this deficit that the United States of America is going to understand and that the nation has got to understand that there is not one penny, not one zero that is added to that deficit that is not being stolen by the principality or prince of the power of the air that's sitting in a high position that's siphoning everything out of every dollar and every dime you can get. How can they add two pennies to a quarter and the deficit still going up and you got millions of people all over the world giving and paying taxes to bring it back down. Don't sit and tell me that 10, 10, 10 won't work. Herman came, you hit it just on the wrong side, brother. Can we finish this? <laughs> Am I the only one getting this? Amen. They don't believe. They, boy, if, oh, oh, God, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord. All it takes is one. I'm going to quit. We got to hurry. Are y'all ready to get to the good part? Amen. I know you're saying we already, woo, I'm going to leave y'all out and have nobody minister to today. I ain't have nobody to talk to today. And I, 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 I'm getting to the good part up in here. Because the Lord is saying to tell the enemy that he can't take away my warriors. Oh, I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to y'all. He said he can't take away my warriors. Neither can he take away my first beginning agenda. The Lord said I closed the deal before I sealed the deal. I ain't never heard that before. I ain't never heard that me. I ain't never heard that Dev. I ain't never heard that sis. God said I closed the deal before I sealed the deal. I got to get to the good part. Man, y'all got something around y'all. There's something on y'all. I'm standing away from y'all. I don't want to talk to y'all out the church. Y'all ain't getting it. Boy, y'all better get this. The Lord said, hey, glory. Say, I feel the anointing up in here. Y'all excuse me. I got to get 10 more minutes extra. I got to get 10 more minutes extra. Because the Lord is letting me know right now that there, 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 there's an angel. I ain't never seen this one before. But this one is made, made out of steel. And God said to tell you, Kevin, I put him around you. 
even up in Atlanta, I don't know what happened. Up in, up in Atlanta, a city, a city. God said, I put him around you. And he was the one that became your block boy. Woo, come on, brother. Yes, sir. Yes. He was the one that blocked your house. Woo, come on. And blocked everything else. Come on, oh, no, no, no. And the Lord is saying to tell you that I've also placed another leverage on the inside of you. Shh. I got to talk to you, come brother. On, brother. And he said, to, don't talk to you. come on, prophet. The Lord is saying to tell you that now I've placed this other leverage on the inside of you and you are getting ready to pull the next level of this lever. <laughs> now you can say, come on, prophet. Come on, prophet. <laughs> I, I, I think we got some folks get mad because you come get blessed. On, come on, prophet. Say, how can God bless a bad boy? <laughs> I got to get out of here. I got to have at least three more. <laughs> How much time I got? Oh, y'all, we are not going to finish this today. I want to show you the blessing. Oh, I want to show you the blessing. My time is running out. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It says in verse number 24, Therefore I say unto you, What thing soever you desire, oh, my God, whatever I desire. Come on. It's where y'all at. Is, yes. is there anything you desire? Yes. Come on. I thank God for a muscadine. Whatsoever things you desire, I thank God for a fish. Yes, now wait, now wait. Wait. You trying to get to the house part. Yes. Come on. I'm not thanking God for that yet. Right. Whatsoever things you desire, oh my time, the fastest 30 minutes. We are going to have to pick this up on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. <laughs> Living strong. I can't. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, when you pray, he didn't say when you go get a gun. He didn't say when you go get a bomb. He said, when you pray, which means you're going to say something. When? When? Fastest 30 minutes are already come and gone. Whosoever will outreach ministry, I want to say to you, that's my time. Thank you for yours. Have a good night. And I want you to know that we love you. Thank God for you. Keep us in your prayer. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Have a good night. Bye now. I'm wise, I'm good, and my hope is good in you, Lord.
thank you, Lord. Forgive my daily behavior is what I say to my Savior for I fall asleep. Yeah, for the record, Lord is my shepherd. Bless them, we all a sheep. They call the street. Quick crush the autumn leaf and then call it peace for the conqueror. All about my collar leash, now the walls are breach. We all a meet. Heaven's what we all a meet. Preach.